but my dad had been preparing me for this plan all my life. And eventually, despite my inner rebel, I fell in line. That summer, the last thing that I expected was anything unexpected. One warm afternoon, I got a call from a good friend of mine with an irresistible offer. He said, my brother has this video he keeps waving around excitedly. He says, it's amazing. He said, invite all the guys over to watch it. We're even ordering pizza and getting a keg. Beer, pizza, and an amazing, probably not so PG movie. Hey, I was an 18 year old male. This was my trifecta of a good time. Count me in, I told my buddy. The moment of uh-oh. I arrived at my friend's house ready for guys night. As planned, there was pizza and beer. But the movie? It was nothing like I had expected. I was entranced though. For 20 minutes, I couldn't pull my eyes away from it. When it ended, I looked around the room to find my buddy staring blankly at the television screen. Clearly, they were expecting a different show as well. But while they appeared unaffected by what they had just witnessed, I thought it was totally rad. Remember, it was the 80s. The video came from a company that offered you the chance to buy home water filtration systems at wholesale, then sell them at retail prices and earn yourself a nice little profit. It offered, essentially, a chance to be in business. Wait a minute, I thought. I can do that. Heck, this was right up my alley. Champion something worthy, make a profit, be in charge, do something different? The idea touched something deep inside me. Even as a kid, I had a tendency to see opportunity when others stared blankly ahead. In the summers when my friends worked Mick jobs, I did things differently. I took odd jobs like mowing lawns and collecting nails at the local construction site for a penny a piece. I was commissioned by a local trade school to get strangers to fill out surveys at buses and rail stations as a recruiting strategy. I worked hard, but I marched to my own beat and learned things on my own. The idea of running your own business, of controlling your own future and not being constrained by minimum wages and pointless rules, my inner rebel jumped out of line. It was like someone had just turned on the world's brightest light bulb and I was in. The cost to sign up and buy your inventory was $5,000, and I didn't even blink. I immediately wrote a check for the full amount, drawing on the savings I had earned, lawn by lawn, nail by nail, and survey by survey. A few short days later, my dad's garage filled up with two pallets worth of water filters. I had no idea what to do with them, but that didn't matter because I was in business. I can still remember how psyched I was. I stood in that garage, hands on my hips, staring up at the mountain of home water filtration systems, and I just kept nodding my head. I was going to dominate filtered water. Then, just three hours into my new business, I received my first rejection. My dad couldn't get his car into the garage. Get this crap out of here, he said. But where am I supposed to put them? How about you get out and sell them, Darren? Well, left with no other choice, I hit the streets 20 minutes later. I didn't normally take that long to get dressed, but suddenly I was feeling something different. Nervousness had set in. But I took a deep breath and began to work my way from house to house through our neighborhood. This comes from Muhammad Yunus, the Nobel Peace Prize winner and microfinance pioneer. He said, all human beings are entrepreneurs. When we were in caves, we were all self-employed, finding our food and feeding ourselves. That's where human history began. As civilization came, we suppressed it. We became labor because they stamped us, you are labor. We forgot that we are entrepreneurs. Introduction. The ticket booth. To ride or not to ride. Once you've made a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. Ralph Waldo Emerson. In the summer of 1989, at the ripe old age of 18, I became an entrepreneur. 
Let me be clear, that wasn't on purpose. That summer started for me the way summers start for many 18-year-olds. I had just finished high school and was gearing up to do exactly what was expected of me, which was to go to college. My plan, or my father's plan, to be more accurate, was for me to spend eight years walking the historic hallways of UCLA, the University of California in Los Angeles, after which I'd walk out waving a law degree or a meal ticket for life, as my dad put it. It was a pretty straightforward plan. I'd get a degree, get a great job with great pay, and get ahead in life. Actually, doctor was my dad's first choice, but after watching me faint repeatedly at the sight of blood, mine or anyone else's, he settled for number two on his list, lawyer. In truth, I'd always been attracted to doing things outside the traditional structure. I had other ideas for getting ahead in life, and working for someone else was not one of them. But it doesn't have to be that way. The entrepreneur roller coaster will prepare you for the wild ride of entrepreneurship. It will warn you of the forthcoming fears, doubts, and self-defeating conditioning of your upbringing and past. It'll inoculate you from the naysayers, dream stealers, and pains of rejection and failure, and guide you as you build those underdeveloped skills of independence, self-motivation, and self-accountability safely past the landmines that blow up and cause the failure rate of 66% of all new businesses. You will learn the best strategies I've ever collected from the most successful people on the planet, having been in the success and human achievement industry now for 20 years. We will cover the four essential skills necessary for entrepreneurial success, sales, recruiting, leadership, and productivity. So this book and audiobook is for you if you've dreamed of having your own business but have a fear of the unknown. You've stayed on the sidelines of entrepreneurship not knowing what to expect or what to do. Or you're already on board as an entrepreneur but you want to ensure you're a success and not a statistic. My mission for this book and the supporting resources I've prepared for you is to onboard and empower 10 million new entrepreneurs globally. I want to help you be a wildly successful entrepreneur so you can help me empower more entrepreneurs through your example and testimonial. Now, sit back, strap yourself in, and get ready for the most thrilling ride of your life. This book is dedicated to my beautiful and loving grandmother, Grams, Francine Zimmerman, who is the first to believe in me as an entrepreneur. It is likely we wouldn't be having this conversation right now if it were not for this wonderful woman. Let me offer some advice about how to listen to this audiobook. Number one, don't just listen. Consume it. Study it devour it. If you do not already have the physical book, I do recommend having it as a companion. I want you to listen to the program, then be compelled to go back to the book to treat it like a workbook, where you underline, highlight, circle, star, write, and put exclamation marks in the margins. You can dog ear or put tabs on the pages on the bits that have particular impact on you. My goal is not to entertain you. Although, if you find the content entertaining, I'm delighted. It is also not to simply inspire or enlighten you, although I think you will find that to be a happy byproduct. This book and audio program was designed to help you get results, to turn ideas and inspiration into perspiration, which means to apply what you learn so you can realize the return of your potential actualized, thus realized. Number two. To help you do this, you can implement the key ideas from each chapter with the summary action plan and worksheets. You can find all the worksheets and other helpful, also free, resources at rollercoasterbook.com forward slash resources. That's rollercoasterbook.com forward slash resources. Number three, I encourage you to share quotes and content from the book that strike you on your social networks. 
We've highlighted some of our favorites in the book, so we encourage you to join us in our goal to inspire and encourage existing and would-be entrepreneurs all over the globe. All right, sit back and get ready to enjoy the exhilarating, fun, and wild ride we have ahead. This is a universe of vibration. As Einstein once observed, nothing happens until something moves. That is, everything vibrates to a particular measurable frequency. Break the solid world down to smaller and tinier components, and you see that what appears to be solid is a dance, a dance of particles and empty spaces. Go to the tiniest of these quantum particles, and you discover that it emanated from a source that vibrates so fast that it defies the world of beginnings and endings. This highest, fastest energy is called source energy. You and everyone and everything originated in this vibration and then moved into the world of things, bodies, minds, and egos. It was in the leaving of this source energy in our bodies, minds, that we took on our entire world of problems, illnesses, scarcities, and fears. The teachings of Abraham essentially are focused on helping you to return in all respects to that source from which all things originate and return to as well. This source energy has a look and feel to it that I've touched upon in my book, The Power of Intention. Abraham, however, can offer this enlightening wisdom to you by having the benefit of being 100% connected to that source and never ever doubting that connection. It's evident in every paragraph of this book. That's why I call this a publishing milestone. You're in direct, conscious contact with a cadre of honest, no-nonsense beings who have only your well-being in mind. They'll remind you that you came from source of well-being and that you can either summon higher vibrational energy to yourself and allow it to flow unimpeded in every aspect of your life, or you can resist it, and by doing so stay disconnected from which is all-providing and all-loving. The message here is quite startling and yet oh so simple. You came from a source of love and well-being. When you're matched up to that energy of peace and love, you then regain the power of your source, that being the power to manifest your desires, to summon well-being, to attract abundance where scarcity previously resided, and to access divine guidance in the form of the right people and the precisely correct circumstances. I appreciate how the book presents profound truths in such a down-to-earth way. The book's refreshing tone is supportive, loving, and completely positive. I'm giving away copies of Ask and It Is Given to everyone I know. I love and highly recommend this book. Doreen Virtue, Ph.D., the best-selling author of Angel Medicine. This book is dedicated to all of you who, in your desire for enlightenment and well-being, have asked the questions this book has answered, and to three delightful children of our children who are examples of what this book teaches. Laurel, five, Kevin, three, and Kate, two, who are not yet asking because they have not yet forgotten. And these teachings are especially dedicated to Louise Hay, whose desire to ask and learn and disseminate around this planet the principles of well-being has led her to ask us to create this comprehensive book of the teachings of Abraham. Forward by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer, the best-selling author of The Power of Intention. Dedication This book is dedicated to all of you who, in your desire for enlightenment and well-being, have asked the questions this book has answered, and to three delightful children of our children who are examples of what the book teaches. Laurel 5, Kevin 3, and Kate 2, who are not yet asking because they have not yet forgotten. This is what your source does, and since you emanated from that source, you can and will do the same. I've spent a full day with Abraham in person. I've dined with Esther and Jerry, and I've listened to hundreds of Abraham's recordings, so you can take it from me firsthand. You're about to embark on a life-changing journey offered to you by two of the most authentic and spiritually pure people I've ever encountered. Jerry and Esther Hicks are as much in awe of their role in bringing these teachings to you as I am in writing this forward for Abraham. 
I encourage you to read these words carefully and apply them instantly. They summarize an observation I've offered for many years now. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. You're about to see and experience a whole new world of changing right before your eyes. This is the world created by a source energy that wants you to reconnect to it and live a life of joyful well-being. Thank you, Abraham, for allowing me to say a few words in this precious, precious book. I love you, all of you. Wayne Preface by Jerry Hicks Sunlight is beginning to spill across the Malibu coastline as I begin this preface, and the deep indigo tint of the Pacific Ocean at this time of morning seems to match the depth of pleasure I'm feeling as I'm imagining the value you are about to receive from the revelations within this book. Ask and It Is Given is certainly a book about our asking, being answered by all that is, but it's primarily about how whatever we're asking for is being given to us and it's also the first book to ever, in such clear terminology, give us the simple practical formula for how to ask for and then how to receive whatever we want to be, do, or have. Decades ago, while searching for plausible answers to my never-ending quest to know what it is all about, I discovered the word ineffable, meaning incapable of being expressed in words. Ineffable coincided with the conclusion I'd formed relative to it. I had decided that the closer we get to knowing the non-physical, the fewer words we have for clearly expressing it. And so, any state of complete knowing would also therefore be in a state of ineffability. In other words, at this point in our time-space reality, the non-physical cannot be clearly expressed with physical words. And these teachings are especially dedicated to Louise Hay, whose desire to ask and learn and disseminate around this planet the principles of well-being has led her to ask us to create this comprehensive book of the teachings of Abraham. The book you're holding in your hands at this moment contains some of the most powerful teachings available to you on our planet today. I've been profoundly touched and influenced by the messages that Abraham offers here in this book and through the tapes that Esther and Jerry have been providing over the past 18 years. In fact, I'm deeply honored that Abraham has asked me to provide a brief forward to this book which I consider to be a publishing milestone. It is unique in all of publishing. You'll be fortunate to tap into the thinking of those who are permanently connected to source energy. Moreover, these voices of spirit speak in a language you'll understand and be able to instantly translate into action. They offer you no less than a blueprint for understanding and implementing your own destiny. My first thought is that if you're not yet ready to read and apply this great wisdom, then I urge you to simply carry this book with you for a few weeks. Allow the energy that it contains to permeate through any resistance that your mind-body might offer and let it resonate with that inner place that is formless and boundaryless. This is what is often called your soul, but Abraham would call it your vibrational connection to your source. Throughout physical history, we've evolved to, through, and into billions of philosophies, religions, opinions, and beliefs. Yet, with the billions upon billions of thinkers thinking, concluding, and passing their beliefs on to the next generations, we have not, at least not in any words we can agree on, found physical words to express the non-physical. Recorded history has retained some form of documentation of but a few of the many beings who have consciously communicated with non-physical intelligence. Some were revered, while some were damned by others. Most, however, who have been conscious of personal communication with the non-physical, perhaps in fear of being damned or even institutionalized, have decided to go and tell no one about their revelations. Moses, Jesus, Mohammed, Joan of Arc, Joseph Smith, to name but a few of those better known to the English-speaking world, were each outspoken recipients of non-physical intelligence, most of whom met with quite untimely and horrible physical ends. 
And so, although each of us is directly receiving some form of non-physical guidance, only a few receive blocks of non-physical thought that are clear enough to be translated into our physical words, and of those few, fewer still are willing to disclose their experience to others. I remind you of this information as a preface to what you're about to read, for my wife, Esther, is one of those rare persons who can, at will, relax her conscious mind enough to allow the reception of non-physical answers to whatever is asked. I pushed myself to knock on every door and ring every bell. To everyone who answered, I delivered my world-dominating pitch for better water straight from their own tap. Right there in your kitchen, I'd tell them. No more lugging heavy water jugs back and forth to the store. Can you believe this option even exists? It was a long first day in business. With every door that opened, I tried a new angle. I'd scare them with facts about the disgusting water they were currently feeding their families and pets. I inspired them with visions of a world where water was clean, fresh, and limitless. I used charm, or so I had thought. I used compelling statistics. I used selling techniques that had never been used before and probably never will again. But I was determined and I was focused. I persevered even when things looked bleak. And at the end of the day, I had sold nothing. I couldn't believe it. How is that even possible? I had 40 water filters in my father's garage at the beginning of the day and 40 sitting there when I got back. As the garage door shut that evening with my father's car parked outside, I knew I was in big trouble. Worse still, it was the first time I thought maybe I wasn't cut out for being in business for myself. Maybe my dad was right. Maybe college and a good job really was the right path. Stressed, disillusioned, and a little afraid of my father? I did what any rejected teenage businessman does when confronted with failure. I called my grandmother. You see, I was raised without a mom. My dad wasn't exactly the nurturing type either. He was a stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about kind of guy. If you remember the Stanley Kubrick movie Full Metal Jacket, you'll understand that growing up in my house was like being in Gunnery Sergeant Hartman's platoon. My grandmother, however, was a calm spot in the storm. She was the woman in my life who helped me become the man that I am today. She provided the warm, gushy, I could do no wrong, unconditional love that I needed. She thought I was wonderful even when I wasn't. All she had to do was smile and call me darling and I knew I was loved. It was my grandmother who taught me about money. She helped me open up my first bank account. She taught me to save and encouraged me to make it grow. All these things made my grandmother a great inspiration. They did not, however, make her a tough customer, which meant that on that particularly trying first day in the water filtration business, she was just what I needed. I called her and arranged to visit. During my visit, I gave her my well-polished clean water for pennies a gallon pitch. But before I could even use my triple tie down Jack Benny clothes, my grandmother interrupted. That sounds great, dear, she said. I'll take one. I tried not to look surprised. Did she just say she'd take one? Inspired, I pressed on. I explained the silliness of the basic model and that of course she should upgrade to the Cadillac model in my arsenal, the under the sink water unit. No unsightly containers on the counter, no mess. Just filtered water, on demand, straight from your tap. She asked, but who's going to install it? You know you don't want me asking your grandfather to do it. We'll never hear the end of it. No problem, Grams, I said. I'll install it. It's no sweat. Okay then, dear. I'll take whichever one you suggest, she said. With those nine little words, I had my first sale and an upsell at that. While Grandma went to get her checkbook, I started the installation. Less than an hour later, I was down one filter and up one customer. Glowing with success, I took that natural next step all successful salespeople take. I asked for referrals. It was too easy. My grandparents lived in a 50-plus retirement community, a nice place filled with nice people, each of whom was delighted to meet my grandmother's perfect grandson. 
Did they want a water filter? Why, of course they did! And of course, they all wanted the same model my grandmother had. In no time, going door to door with my grandmother in tow, I sold and installed 18 water filters in my grandmother's building. I was killing it! I was an entrepreneurial sensation. I was flying high. Based on my success, I ordered more water filters. Clearly, my biggest problem would be keeping inventory on the shelf. I'd be able to go to school to do that lawyer thing and keep my dad happy and build my water filter empire on the side. I had it all figured out. A few days after my inaugural sale, my grandparents went on vacation to Hawaii and I left for college. While sitting on a lanai sipping Kona coffee one morning, they received a phone call from one of the neighbors in their complex. They lived on the first floor directly below my grandparents' unit. There seemed to be a problem, a very, very wet problem. The downstairs neighbors explained that as they were sitting in the living room watching Wheel of Fortune, they noticed a small drip coming from the light fixture above them. After the first spin of the wheel, but long before the contestants solved the puzzle, that drip had turned into a stream, and moments later, a deluge of water pouring from the ceiling. Panicked, the neighbors had called maintenance and raced upstairs to find the entire apartment filled with several inches of water. My grandparents' home was flooded. The carpets, the furniture, the walls, books, boxes, shoes, clothes, appliances, and more, all were ruined. The place was a disaster. And the source of the leak? The under-the-sink Cadillac of water filters, courtesy of yours truly. I was horrified. That lousy water filter was to blame, and I immediately began mentally rehearsing the heated conversation I would have with the water filter higher-ups. What irresponsible manufacturing practices, allowing faulty filters of destruction to enter the homes of innocent, unsuspecting victims, the outrage. But before I could make the call, things got worse. It appeared as though the flooding wasn't the result of a malfunctioning filter. It took a qualified plumber less than a minute to conclude that whoever had installed the water filter had made a rookie mistake, putting a critical gasket in backward. That rookie mistake maker was, of course, me, my grandmother's perfect grandson. It was entirely my fault. And not just for what happened at my grandparents' apartment, but for what was no doubt about to happen in 18 other units. I had installed every single one of the filters I sold. One-stop shop here, folks. See how easy this is? Before I went away to college, feeling like a big shot, I'd placed 18 ticking time bombs in a building full of my grandparents' friends. In the end, I didn't defuse the bombs. It was my grandfather and a plumber, or as my grandfather put it, someone who knows what the hell he's doing. Together, they went to every unit and reinstalled the water filters properly. Afterwards, tail between my legs, I timidly asked my grandfather what I owed him. He simply replied, considered our contribution to your college tuition. While I never finished official college, looking back on it now, it was money well spent towards my tuition in the entrepreneur school of hard knocks. In time, thanks to the insurance my grandfather was smart enough to have, as he put it, my grandparents' home was repaired and renovated. I was able to pick myself up, dry myself off, and continue my water filter career. And just as I had proclaimed that first day while staring at the boxes of filters in my father's garage, I totally dominated. Well, kind of. That was many, many years ago. But even now, as I tell you the story, I can remember that first night watching the movie like it was yesterday. I remember how I felt, the excitement of seeing a unique opportunity and the joy of discovering something that fit me, that suited my drive and affinity for doing things differently from everyone else. I remember the initial anxiety of taking the leap and investing my hard-earned cash, and the moment of fear when I considered I might not be cut out for this business and might lose all my savings. I remember the thrill of seeing my first products arrive, 
and the deflation I felt when my father was nothing but annoyed. I remember feeling the optimism that everyone would buy and the hollow pit in my stomach when everyone said no. The elation of selling that first product, even if it was to my grandma, and the exhilarating blur of the sales streak that followed. And of course, I'll never forget the shame, the embarrassment, and the struggle to overcome the failure that flooded my first few weeks in business. The summer I became an entrepreneur by accident was a gut-wrenching, unpredictable ride of euphoric highs and terrifying lows.